didn't speak any English, but saw that I was perplexed. He said, come here. This then was boarded up with just a wooden door. And it was latched there. He threw away the wooden slabs, opened the door, and he said, look up. Oh. And that is the key. Uh -huh. Took a picture in 1997. Sent it to Mayan daykeeper Hanbat's men. He said he recognizes this as the language of the Itza people, where is Chichen Itza. He said it's an ancient language. But a lot of people are not sure about Hanbat's men. So we went one step further. In 2010, I got to meet Dama Lajandro Sul Ojraj. He is the wisdom keeper, the head of the Kiche Maya of all of Guatemala. I showed him this picture, and his eyes went as big as saucers. And he said to me, that is the language of my ancestors. That is a calendar. That is telling the date of when Maya was here. And how we can't read it, he can't even still read it, but he knows that the circles and squares and different colors and ranges and the spokes in the wheel are indications of a date. So, this has never been discussed by any Egyptologist. When we're talking about the hidden connection between America and Africa, or rather Mexico and Egypt, it's only right we bring up the ancient site of Calix Lawaka. I'm sure many of you have seen this site before. This is the site with the giant Ankh. And for those of you who didn't know, yes, there's a giant Ankh in Mexico. Not only was there a giant stone Ankh found in Mexico, but there was also a Sphinx. Mexico City, September 4th. The Department of Education announced today Boy Scouts discovered a new archaeological zone in the wilds of Guerrero. Among the figures discovered is a large stone sphinx bearing a marked resemblance to that in Egypt. Government archaeologists are leaving forthwith to study the zone, which, according to preliminary reports, probably includes an entire buried city. A number of hills in the zone are believed to cover pyramids. On the summit of one of them is a huge globular stone covered with a kind of hieroglyphic. I'm trying to show you what archaeologists have found in the past in corroboration with America and Africa being connected. Now this newspaper article is from January 7th, 1903, a little bit over 100 years ago. In your own North American continent, no more than six days journey from New York City is the land whence Egypt itself obtained its building patterns. In this land, pyramids are plenty. Here be the ruins of temples after whose architecture India itself took model in the palmiest days of its civilization. Itself so old that only from its ruins can modern men guess what it was like. Meaning that people today can only guess. And that's all they're doing is assuming and making making guesses supposed educated guesses were sacred elephants worshipped in India which India because we know North America was called India Superior but we are gonna continue in this American land of enchantment sacred elephants are sculptured upon temple walls and are lined in mural paintings whose colors 10,000 years have not destroyed go to Egypt and to India to study archaeology will you when here at our own doors lies what is left above water of that country, which was the mother of the most ancient civilizations of Asia and Egypt. So the person that wrote this newspaper article is just letting you know flat out. The cradle of the modern human race, there is reason to believe, was Central America, and thence the race spread to Asia and Egypt. I've also used the source to prove in my last videos that today's Native Americans look nothing like the first Americans and scientists were actually puzzled over that fact. The first Americans look more like Australasians, Melanesians, or Aboriginal Africans, as they said. Agassiz decided from his study of geology that America was the old world. The researches of the La Plongeons among the mighty ruins of Yucatan confirm this judgment. Louis Agassiz was a renowned geologist. He believed that, like the author said, that America was the old world. He believed that America was the oldest continent. But he believed that it was people last, which doesn't make any sense. Man could be millions of years older than the current evolutionary model suggests. 
This bizarre evidence seems to have been well documented, yet the general public and many within the scientific community are unaware of these controversial finds. The question is, why haven't we heard of these discoveries before? Oh, I think we're talking about a massive cover-up. Oh, I think we're talking about a massive cover-up. Uh, as I said, over the past 150 years, uh, these archaeologists and anthropologists have covered up as much evidence as they've dug up, literally. Basically what you find is uh, something we call a knowledge filter. This is a fundamental feature of science. It's also a fundamental feature of human nature. People tend to filter out things that don't fit, that don't make sense in terms of their paradigm or their way of thinking. So in science you find that evidence that doesn't fit the accepted paradigm tends to be eliminated. It's not taught, it's not discussed, and people who are educated in, in scientific teachings generally don't even learn about it. Conventional theory states that modern man originated in southern Africa around 100,000 years ago. From there, he migrated north into Europe and southern Asia, continued through Asia, and crossed the Bering Strait into the New World around 30,000 years ago. He then came down through North America and finally arrived in South America around 15,000 years ago. Yet numerous artifacts have been found across North and South America that are so old they threaten to completely overturn this theory. According to geologist Virginia Steen McIntyre, she was silenced at the height of her career because of her determination to report the facts. In the summer of 1966, a collection of stone tools, including this leaf-shaped spear point, was uncovered at Hoyatlico, Mexico. To find out exactly how old the spear points were, a team of experts from the United States Geological Survey was called in to date them. When we first began to work on the Hoyatlico site, we thought we had an old site. This is back in 66, and we thought it was perhaps 20,000 years old, and at that time that was considered a very old age for the site. We did what they call radiometric dates, which gives an actual date range. And we used two different methods to do that. One was using uranium uh, atoms, another one was using little zircon crystals. When we finally got the dates and all the different methods we used to date it, it came out to be 250,000 years old. To tell you the truth, I would have been happy with a 20,000-year-old date. It would have made my career. It was very old for the time. But it wasn't so old that it was that controversial. People can take 20,000-year steps. They can't take steps that are over 200,000 years at one time. And I was rather naive. I thought, OK, we've got something big here. But I'm just going to stick with the date. We've got the information. We've got the facts. Let's get the facts out and go on from there. And I didn't realize it was going to ruin my whole career. According to Dr. McIntyre, because she stuck to the facts, all of her professional opportunities were closed off. She's not worked in her chosen field since. The site was closed and permission for further investigation was denied forever. Now we're looking in the Kansas City Journal, dated to the 12th of October of 1896. Prehistoric man, the human race and its dispersions. Now I'm gonna skip through it a little bit. It says, after correlating all data that have been made public to the present time, the conclusion is unavoidable that the oldest civilization was in Yucatan in Central America. Future discoveries may change this conclusion. It seems that Egypt was first peopled by immigrants from Yucatan. Space will allow only a few facts that clearly indicate the truth of this assertion. First, the pyramids of Yucatan are some of them much larger than any found in Egypt that of Cheops not accepted. Meaning, the pyramids in the Yucatan are even larger than that of Cheops. Second, the pyramids of Egypt bear structural evidences of having been modeled on those of Yucatan, notably of the one at Coloma, which covers 23 acres. This pyramid covers 23 acres, right? Wow. Football stadiums are just a little bit over one acre. Third, the early Egyptians and the Mayas of Yucatan had the same system of reckoning time. 
but the Mayas developed a system that was far superior and which antedates that of Egypt. At the very beginning, I showed you the Mayan calendar in Egypt. If that's not a big enough connection, then I don't know what is. Fourth, the Mayas manufactured a cement that was of the same material as that of ancient Egypt. Fifth, the architecture of Yucatan is of the same general type as that of ancient Egypt, but it is finer and seems to have been the model that the Egyptians attempted to imitate. The art of both countries, as displayed in their ceramics and architecture, is of the same type or school, that of Yucatan being much more highly developed. Maybe it's because they're older, they have more time to do so. We're going to look into this book so we can have a description on how the ancient people depicted themselves. This author basically was trying to prove throughout the book that there had to be a separate island from America, which he considered to be Atlantis. But if you've watched my videos, America itself is Atlantis. And sure, there was a continent which flooded or sank, as they say, but that wasn't Atlantis. Without Atlantis, how can we explain the fact that the early Egyptians were depicted by themselves as red men on their own monuments? And on the other hand, how can we account for the representation of Negroes on the monuments of Central America? Meaning, they were one and the same. They were depicting themselves as the same thing on different sides of the water. That's basically his question, how can we account for that fact? Dr. Le Plongeon says, besides the sculptures of long bearded men seen by the explorer at Chichen Itza, there were tall figures of people with small heads, thick lips, and curly short hair or wool regarded as Negroes. We always, always see them as standard or parasol bearers, but never engaged in actual warfare. The following cuts from the court of the Palace of Palenque, figured by Stephens. The face is strongly Ethiopian, that don't mean African, it just means Negroid or sunburnt. In other words, Negroid, because this has no color. Then he goes on to talk about the giant Omeg heads. Well, what we know today as Omeg heads. He says that it has strong, unmistakable Negroid features. Then the author, because he's a racist, says that the so-called Negro could only have been in America because of two reasons. Because the sea brought us over here and the second reason you could have guessed it as a slave all right now we're gonna take a look into this book right here quaterphages le plongeon and boncraft have proved that certain aboriginal negro tribes inhabited america not so very long ago meaning not very long from the time of this being written and i believe this was the early 1900s if i'm not mistaken some statues of the Indian gods in Central America possess typical Negro features and certain prehistoric monuments there undoubtedly represent Negroes. Emphasis on prehistoric and aboriginal. We have, for instance, such statues in Teotihuacan in Palenque and a gigantic Negro's head carved in granite near the Mexican volcano of Taxila. I have seen a statuette of a Negro in the archaeological collection of Mr. Ernesto Franco in Quito. According to the opinion of local archaeologists, this statuette is at least 20,000 years old. The autochthonous black races in America were either gradually mixed with the Indian ones or became extinct, but in a very remote time, Negroes or Negroids were very numerous in the New World. Now, are we extinct or do they just want us to be? That to me is a Negroid face that has all the features that you associate with a Negroid face. The um, proportions of the face, it doesn't say anything about it being a mongoloid. Was this then the face of a first American 